Do you want to learn how to make hundreds of dollars every single day by leasing property for other people? If you do, stay tuned. Hey, what's up? Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, investors, and business owners grow toward financial freedom. All right, so let's jump in. First off, full disclosure, I just want to let you guys know that this is no way intended for get rich quick. This is a long-term play. It does take some time, but if you put the time in, you can definitely have the fruits of your labor and residual income from this. Uh, quick story. Uh, when the real estate market crashed, my sister and I, we really had a, um, a, a tough time in terms of real estate sales. Our sales did drop down because you know there, there really wasn't anything selling at the time. One thing that really um, ensured our survival was leasing property for other people. Um, thank God that we had this in place. It was, it was there when we needed it and uh, provided us easily six figures uh, for the first few years, especially during that real estate crash. So I can tell you that um, despite what, what happens in your real estate market, rentals are always gonna be there. And if you guys are representing landlords, you're always gonna have this residual income. Also, you're gonna wanna watch this video all the way to the end where I talk about exactly how you can make you know, 20, 30, 50, even $100,000 more uh, in additional revenue just by being a little bit creative and uh, staying in front of this database of landlords that you have at your disposal. Now there's two ways to go about this and it's really gonna just depend on your state, uh, state regulations as well as the brokerage you're with. The, the two different ways are tenant placement as well as full property management. Now tenant placement is the opportunity where you really don't have to deal with the maintenance calls and uh, issues like that and collecting of rents uh, you're essentially placing tenants and collecting, usually equate to one month's rent. Um, this isn't necessarily the, the residual play that you wanna get yourself into, but if your brokerage doesn't do property management, then you might not be able to collect rents and do full property management. So this is an alternative option for you. So essentially, again, you can collect one month's rent or whatever you wanna charge for placing that tenant. You handle all the paperwork, the background check, the credit checks, and um, get an approved tenant in place, and your job is done. And we usually, on ours, we usually would have the tenant pay the first month's rent to our company. We get paid up front, and that's it. The second thing is full property management. Now, this is where um, in many cases, you can charge the, the flat fee, one month's rent, or even a half month's rent. It just depends, and you can negotiate this. Plus your residual management fee, uh, let's say it's 10%, 12%, whatever your market bears, but let's go with 10%. Um, this is where you're gonna handle all the maintenance calls, um, as well as collecting the rents, making sure that people are paying on time. If they're not paying on time, you're gonna have to get involved. Um, one thing that you could do to really alleviate time is to get a good um, contractor on your side or, or even um, company that is well versed in handling uh, maintenance calls and so forth. Uh, there's several local companies here that we use that you could actually um, have all the phone calls from tenants go directly to them because a lot of times they're 24 hours, especially if you have issues with you know, water leaks or HVAC isn't working. Uh, stuff like that. So it's it's really um, it's really imperative that you align yourself with a company like this. And then from the beginning, you make it known that all tenants to call this company for any major uh, after hours calls. <clears throat> and then also you're going to want to get permission from the owner and give this company permission to handle anything that's going to be say under five hundred dollars. If it's over that, to call you directly to get further permission of. Uh, any expenditures that are going to be higher than that. Um, and then obviously if it's an emergency, emergency case, just handle whatever it is. Now how can we get these listings? Um, you know, there's a, a lot of uh, landlords that, that need your help. Um, a lot of times they try to do it on their own and you know, they're, they're off market or they don't have anybody leasing their property out for one, two, three, four, five, several months down the road. And this is where you come into play. You know, it, it, your, your cost is outweighed by you getting at least out quicker because you're gonna be more aggressive, you have more marketing techniques, and um, overall you're gonna go to open market where they just don't have that ability per se. 
So um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do have a good presentation to present to these people. But one thing that we did, and it worked out really well, was we concentrated in areas that we knew that there were more, um, more tenants living in certain communities. So what we did was we would mail uh, to absentee owners and we would just get a list uh, from Realist. It's a, it's a platform that you guys probably have as well. And you can find out <clears throat> all the absentee owners and mail just that list. So say a community of 300 to be narrowed down to like 50 people that uh, 50 owners that were absentee owners that they might be using it seasonally, but odds are they're renting it out. So we would just keep them on a database of mailing them every quarter. That worked very well for us. Um, another thing is you can reach out to real estate agents who have listings, properties listed on the market for sale, say over 250 days, probably overpriced. Now you can call these real estate agents and let them know that you're in the business of renting properties, see if they'd be willing to reach out to their owner, to their seller, and see if they'd ha have any interest in an alternative and to lease their property out instead of selling it or still keep it on the market for sale. <clears throat> in this relationship, you can offer that real estate agent uh, a nice co-broke or even the first month's rent or the flat fee that you guys charge in the beginning to incentivize that agent to go ahead and reach out to that owner. What does that agent really have to lose? You know, if you're on the market for 200 plus days, odds are you might not get a single dime out of it. So it's not gonna hurt. It's also gonna show that that agent is getting creative with that seller and that seller should appreciate that. So um, this, and this primarily works for properties that are vacant. Obviously, if somebody is um, living in the property, they might not be as much of a rush or whatever the case is, but vacant properties is gonna be the ideal. So get on your MLS, search for vacant properties over 200 days, 250 days, and see what comes up, see how may come up on the market. Another way to get listings is um, driving around. I mean, you're gonna see for sale or for rent signs um, in your local market, uh, especially single family homes. And also you can concentrate in really any areas that you want. So um, your, your fees, your 10%, do you wanna make 10% of $1,000 or do you wanna make 10% of $2,000? So it just depends on your market and how much you wanna make per, Per deal, um, a lot of times the higher rent properties may be even easier to manage in your market as well. So these are some of the things you're gonna take in consideration. But you can just drive around and find for rent by owners all over the place. There's also uh, rent.com, you can get on Zillow as well and some of the other sites to find um, any owners who are trying to rent their properties out themselves. Give them a call and see if you can offer their services. Um, I highly recommend getting on the phone and calling. You're gonna increase the amount of properties that you're gonna get in a timely manner. So, you know, if your goal is to get uh, 10 properties under your belt in the next 30 days, you know, get on the phones and call. Based on this and based on the thumbnail that I provided, that's only based on 100 properties. All right, so let's run the numbers based on 100 properties. Uh, let's say the average rent is $1,600 a month. 10% is 160 per unit times 100 properties is 16,000 per month. Uh, over a year's time, that's 192,000 per year. That equates to $526 per day. Also keep in mind, this doesn't take in consideration uh, the flat fee that you get for initially leasing the property to new tenants. All right, and another thing is, um, a way to really generate more revenue for you guys is to stay in front of this clientele uh, twofold. You want to stay in front of the tenants, the tenants who are renting these properties. You know, that becomes part of your sphere of influence and you're going to be able to see other videos that I have on that as well. I'll put some links below for you. Um, so you're going to stay in front of these people. These people might be buyers in the future. So, you know, give them a call maybe two, three times, maybe every quarter and see where they're at. If you have a hundred properties, that's a hundred tenants that you're dealing with. Um, you're going to get some sales out. There's no doubt about it. It's just a matter of staying in front of these people. So email them, mail them, get on the phone and help them, um, help them help themselves. Uh, next thing is you're going to have landlords that are accidental landlords. They bought a property and they had to relocate so they started to rent their properties out for example. And um, many times they don't want to be landlords anymore. So you're going to have a certain amount of turnover uh, that you're going to go ahead and list assuming that you're staying in front of them. You have to stay in front of them to express 
that your team still does sales, real estate sales as well. And who's better to handle that than you guys and handle the showings with the tenants and so forth. So I can tell you it's a very easy sale when you're staying in front of the landlord and they're contemplating on listing the property. It's usually pretty easy to get those listings, but you're not gonna get them unless you're staying in front of them because many landlords think that if you're a leasing agent that's all you do and you have to express to them that that's not all you guys do your team is well versed and you guys can handle the sales as well uh, another thing is a lot of these investors are move up investors meaning you know they might have a single family home or four single family homes or a duplex or a small apartment complex you know you guys can handle all these um, but anyway they they might be the uh, they might want to grow their portfolio. So uh, it's very important to stay in front of this group as well. Um, all of your landlords you want to stay in front of, but this group you want to, when you're first taking the listing, you want to sit down with them after you've gotten the properties leased out and show them what they, what you could do for them. You want to sit down with them, bring them out to coffee or lunch and talk about their portfolio. Talk about what, um, what, what their goals are for their real estate portfolio. Um, I've had many clients in the past that went from, you know, uh, even a small fourplex to 50 unit apartment complexes over the years. And I was part of that. I was part of those transactions. So we had multiple transactions over the years for just one client. Also, you're gonna wanna educate them on 1031 exchanges. If you don't know about 1031 exchanges, be sure you get uh, a local rep that can help you guys out. Uh, we have a handful here locally that um, that will sit down with our client together and we can all strategize and talk about it because a lot of investors they don't know that they can defer paying taxes on their gain and keep moving their port the growth of their portfolio higher and higher so uh, it's imperative that you guys stay in front of this group if you don't you're missing out on a ton of money you know I talked about uh, the residual 100, 192 thousand off of uh, per year off of a hundred properties, you know, you guys could potentially double that if you're staying in front of the landlords, the, the landlords who want to grow their portfolio as well as the tenants. So there's a lot of sales transactions that can come out of this. Um, also, those groups that I just spoke about, they become a huge referral source for you as well. You know, who, who do they know that's looking to buy or sell real estate? So again, putting them part of your database, and staying in front of them on a consistent basis is only gonna generate more transactions for you guys. Now, this might be a little far-fetched, a little far out there, but understand something, you don't even have to own the real estate brokerage in order to sell that clientele. For example, let's let's take the 100 properties bringing in $192,000 a year. You could potentially sell that clientele to another buyer. Um, you can sell it to another property management company if you're burnt out and you want to move on or you want to retire. So if in the future your goal was to sell it, you know, based on a three times multiplier, uh, three times 192,000 is 560, $576,000 that you could potentially walk with. Um, I know here in, in Southwest Florida, there's a, a lot of foreign investors as well that are scooping up a lot of uh, vacation rental companies um, which we're going to put a link for that as well, another video on that, as well as uh, property management for annual leases. <clears throat> so that, again, you know, you could build something that's only based on 100 properties. You know, what if you built it to 500 properties and, um, and get a good team in place? You could potentially sell and, you know, walk away with a retirement fund in a five-year period. Whatever your goal, whatever your plan is, you can achieve it if you really put the work into it. So. Um, you know, to get to 100 properties, I think you can probably do it in 18 months if you're really putting your head down and, and doing what you need to do every day to procure uh, more landlords. Another thing is you could look into your local market, talk to some business brokers. If you want to have a jump start, you might be able to find another company that has uh, a portfolio that they're willing to sell, a portfolio of landlords that they have under management. So you can maybe start with 20, something smaller that's reasonably priced. Uh, that person might even be uh, interested in holding paper, uh, basically financing the business, financing the transaction. 
So don't don't um, let the don't let anything stop you from getting creative in this scenario. There's always opportunity, and uh, there's always opportunity for acquisition. So look in your local market, talk to other real estate brokers, talk to other property management companies, talk to business brokers because there might be uh, plenty of opportunity out there for you. Uh, below, you're going to find a step-by-step -step course on how to actually explode a property management company. I'm going to put the link below for you guys. As always, if you found this information useful, hit the like button as well as subscribe because we're going to provide more videos coming at you every single week.